So this is for everybody, of course. Uh, we're going to march. And there's a little routine at the end of this march, which I'd like to teach to you. Uh, I will let me teach it to you first. So everybody uh, who can, who has space, uh, I'd like you to uh, make balls of your fists and put them on your hips uh, with attitude. And I want jumps and kicks. So jump, kick, jump, kick, and a twist, 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 twist. Can everybody try that, please? To my hand. Hands on hips, ready, and. Jump, kick, jump, kick, twist, 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 twist. Follow that by walking around in a little circle. One, two, three, four. Hands on your hips and get ready to do it again. So it'll be jump, kick. So everybody try this routine one more time. Ready, and. Jump, kick, jump, kick, twist, 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 walk around and get ready to do it again. Okay. So we'll get started with the music. When you start listening to the band, I want you to listen for all the different instruments. And when you hear an instrument, you can play it. You will hear a drum. So stand to attention and get ready to play a drum. You will hear perhaps a penny whistle or a piccolo. You might hear a trumpet. You will, if you listen hard, hear a violin. And you might, if you listen really hard, hear something that sounds like the Scottish bagpipes. Scottish bagpipes, give us a try. You blow into a pipe, And before you know it, a large tartan bag has filled with air right below your arm. When you squeeze it down, a long groaning sound comes out of another pipe, low tone, that harmonizes with all the notes that play above it. So try to hear all these instruments and play along if you want to, and then we'll get moving. So, hit it then.
everybody with me? Good. So, have a drink of water if you're thirsty. And let's get ready for the story. I'm going to cue up the music because once we've listened to the story, you're going to dance the story. Okay. The story is called The Little Red Kite. So here she is. Can you see her? Do you see her long decorative tail? As she flies up above the clouds? Okay. So, the little red kite, she climbs up to the top of the hill. And there, on the grassy top, she meets her old friend, the wind. It's a blustery day! shouts the wind. A perfect day for flying. I'm ready, says the little kite, and to prove it, she rises up onto the tips of her toes, pulls her chin up, stands as tall as she can be, and waits. All of a sudden, the wind swoops in and lifts the little kite up off the ground. Up she spins. And if you have a partner, you can take your partner's hand because you're going to turn higher and higher in the air and skip to the side. Let go. Now that you're up here, there's no time to hang around, no time to look at the sky above or look at the earth below because the wind whips in beside the little kite and she darts across the room. By this time, the wind is out of breath. So while he pauses, the little kite bobs up and down. But then the wind lifts his chest, puffs out his cheeks, purses his lips, and blows. And the little kite twirls forward, twirls around, and scuds backwards. She has twirled and swirled so high into the sky, she has reached the stratosphere, also known as the surf zone. That is a place so high up, the wind cannot reach her. So once she's up there, she's able to glide around. And she's gonna glide in the shape of a figure of eight. So you know what that looks like? If you imagine a big eight on the floor, it's a big fat top. You cross over and dance around a big fat bottom and come back to where you started. So there is your figure of eight. You can glide and sway and show that lovely decorative tail behind you. After a little while though, the wind gets impatient. He's down below. And to get the kite's attention, he whistles. <whistles> hey, it's time to come down. It's time to go home. So the little red kite, cradled by the wind, but with gravity pulling, begins to spiral down, around and around. So she does a little slip step. She spirals all the way around and all the way down towards the earth. However, at the last moment, as the earth is rising up towards her and she's about to touch down, there's a surprise. The wind sweeps under her wings and shoots her forward across across the blurry, flattened blades of grass. But by this time, the wind is really out of puff. It's time to go home. So he sighs goodbye 
and slides off down the hill. The little kite nods her own goodbye. Thanks the wind for a day's adventure and flops down gently. So there we have the story of the little red kite. We are going to dance that story by skipping and twirling and darting. Just make sure that you're safe in your room. Uh, but imagine that you're flying in the sky. The dance will go and the story will go four, no, actually six times through. If you get tired, you can take a break. I will dance it with you and I may stop and watch how you're doing. So let's begin at the top of the hill. Let's get ready. And here we go, the little red kite.
Now we are going to listen to Strathspey music and we're going to learn the Strathspey Travelling Step. This is a Scottish country dance step. I'm going to get some help from my friends who are going to teach it to you. And so let me introduce my first friend. His name is Harry. Here is Harry the Hippo. Okay, what I want you to notice about Harry is uh, his strong legs. Look, strong, powerful. So those are qualities that you will bring to your dancing. He is going to be joined by our other friend, Flo the Flamingo. I want you to notice Flo. She's a different sort of creature, right? She's rather tall, she's rather elegant, and she knows it, she's a little bashful. I want you to notice that she has a light feathery body and long legs. You see how she bends that knee as she reaches forward. And when she reaches forward with her foot, her toes are pointed out and down. This boot here that she's balancing on, she's up on the balls of her feet, the fronts of her feet. And again, her foot is facing outward like a V-shape. So let's get going. Let's learn this step. The music that we're going to use is um, from a dance called Slithering House. And we're going to start with Harry. Harry's going to mark out the rhythm of the step. I'll show you what we're ultimately, what we're going to aim for at the end. But the thing, I want to show you the basic pattern of the step. So watch this. You're going to step forward with your right foot. You're going to close, you're going to bring your back foot to close behind the heel of your front foot in a T-shape. This kind of T-shape. You're going to step forward again with your front foot and bring that back foot through, ready for the next step, which is step, close, step. I'll show it to you with my back to you. Starting with my right foot. Step, close, step, and step, close, step. Keep together to finish. So that's what we're aiming for with some extra elements. Flo is going to help us. But that's the basic. Um, and we'll build on the step as we go along. So, first thing I'd like is Harry to come up here. Harry. I'd like you to walk around and let us hear the rhythm in the music using your steps. Simple steps, one after the other. Here we go.
quite a lot there. And I saw some very pretty dancing. Well done, Catherine. What did you think of that? You can talk if you want to, Miss Susan. And also the flamingo was making a four. <laughs> Making a four? Mm -hmm. With his legs. With his legs. Right. How is he making a four? Can you show us? Yep. Okay. Seems going to be pretty hot. Ah! Oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. The mango does it better oh. than me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think you're doing it very well. You're bringing, you are, you're bringing that, that leg up as you bring it through. Step, close, step. Just for a little bit. We're doing it just like step, close, step, bringing that leg through. Step, close, step. Yeah, bending the knee as you come through. <laughs> Very nice, Catherine. You definitely got the hang of it. Okay. And thank you to Harry and Flo. Whew, they're tired. Off to bed. So, um, we have one more story and dance. And our dance is called Miss Haddock Goes Fishing. Miss Haddock Goes Fishing. So let me pull the music up. Now, let me introduce you to Miss Haddock. Here she is. She's waving to you too. You see that she's carrying a fishing rod. This is a reel, the reel part where she reels in her catch, fishing rod, a long line. And down here at the bottom is a rather big, heavy hook, which will feature in the story. So remember that. Um, so Miss Haddock is going to go down to the local park where there's a pond. So let's get down there. Uh, here we are on the edge of the pond. Now, when Miss Haddock arrives, she sees her friend across on the other side of the pond. And to be polite and to acknowledge that her friend is there, and maybe they're going to dance together, she curtsies. So she puts one, try this with me, she puts one leg behind the other foot, one foot behind the other foot, and dips down, bending her knees, and straightens back up, feet back together. You want to try that again? That's curtsy. So let's try that curtsy, ready, and down, up. Her friend on the other side of the pond decides they want to do a bow in acknowledgement of, of Miss Hatter. So you can try a bow, which means standing up nice and straight, arms by your side, bending forward at the waist as you look at your partner or your friend, down and up. So this hello or acknowledgement happens Right at the beginning of the dance, you will hear a chord. It's a blare of sound, and it's telling you that dancing is about to begin. And when you hear that sound, you can curtsy or take a bow to acknowledge or say hello to your friend. You can also do it at the end of the dance, but you're not going to. Uh, yes, we are. We're going to dance through the whole dance. So you can do that at the beginning. And you can do a bow or a curtsy right at the end to, to say, thank you, thank you, friend, for dancing with me. Miss Haddock arrives on the edge of the pond. She sees her friend and decides to slip around the pond. So she takes a slip step halfway around and gives her friend a high five and goes back. She then settles down with a little step, takes out her fishing rod, and casts her line and her hook into the water. It sails. 
Now, this heavy hook sinks down to the bottom of the water and hits a creature who was sleeping down there peacefully on the head. The creature wakes up and is disturbed and is a little bit annoyed. So the creature starts to move and wants to find out what is going on up there. So as the creature stirs and rises up towards the top and the surface of the pond, the water starts to boil and a large whirlpool forms. So you can take your partner's hand and you can feel the whirlpool. Here's the center and the water is whirling around the center. And then all of a sudden, an alligator. A navigator has surfaced from the pond. Here is his long pointy nose. And here is his ridgy pointed scaly back that reaches all the way down his long spine. He is a bit annoyed. So he comes out of the water to see what's going on. He climbs out. He scuttles around the edge of the pond. He jumps into the pond because this haddock jumped into the pond before him. So in he jumps and he sinks down. And as he sinks down, a large wave of water splashes onto the edge of the pond. Now I told you, Miss Haddock and her friend were terrified. When they saw the alligator come out of the water, they jumped into the water. When he jumped into the water, they jumped back out of the water. It was chaos. And Miss Haddock and her friend scurried around the edge of the pond, Whew. only feeling safe when the alligator had sunk back down to the bottom of the pond. Now, we can start the story all over again, and we can dance the story to music. So, let's do that. We will dance the story four times through, beginning with a curtsy or a bow, and ending with a curtsy or a bow. Let me make sure I have the right music lined up. You will wreck it's not the traditional music. Yep, it's all ready. So here we go.
alligator went back to sleep. Everybody's safe. Everybody feels safe. Are you tired now? Okay. So now we're going to have and finish with a nice. I want to just see if any other kids showed up. Okay, so there's two screens. Okay, so we're going to finish now with a nice gentle tune. It's called a waltz. Have you heard of a waltz, Catherine? Have you heard of a waltz? Have you? No? Waltz or no? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think. Okay, well, you might recognize. I don't know. <laughs> Well, that's why we're doing it. That's why this is class, because we're going to learn things. <laughs> that's the spirit. So, I want you all to listen to the music and listen to the rhythm, the strength of the music. You will find that the beats of the music come in groups of three. Let's listen, and I think you'll hear what I'm talking about. It's the next one. The name of these tunes, by the way, are interesting. The waltz tunes, the first one is called A Font Kiss, which is Scottish for one affectionate kiss. And it seems that there was a couple who had one loving kiss, fell in love, and then they had to part, which is very sad. And they wrote a whole romantic song about it. The second tune that you will hear is called Lizzie Lindsay. Lizzie Lindsay was a young woman who was invited by her boyfriend to go live with him in the Highlands of Scotland. He was very polite. That's what I like about this song. If you ever hear the words, he addresses her by her full name. He said, will you come to the Highlands, Lizzie Lindsay? Will you come to the Highlands with me? My name is Lord Ronald MacDonald. My love and my true love to be. So he was very much a gentleman and a lord, but he was inviting her off to the cold, dark highlands of Scotland. I don't know if she went, but at least she got a lovely invitation. So let's waltz to these tunes. Uh, first of all, we're going to start by listening, because I want you to hear the rhythm of a waltz. Turn, lift your hands up, 
and you can turn right under your own arm in a twirl. So that's fun to do the twirl. And then bring your arms back down and start dancing again. Lovely. I can see you do that. Very good. All right, let's get on with the music. Everybody waltz, everybody enjoy. Here we go. <laughs> for the evening. Thank you so much for attending everyone, especially you Catherine. Did you have fun? 